PCBWay is one of the leading PCB manufacturers out there and it is the manufacturer I use for my products. Now if you're either a hobbyist and or looking to create a final product, PCBWay is going to be a really great choice with their 24 hour and also assembly services. So go ahead and check the links down below. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the all new T-Motor FT5 F7 edition, which has not been released yet. So this quadcopter right here has the latest tech from T-Motor. Now they're still using the same old frame from the original FT5 F4. However, there are slight differences. For example, we have the motors, the flight controller, and as well as the ESC. However, this is the first time that I've actually received the FT5. And I must say, I really love the features and the overall design of the frame. However, I'm not really a big fan of the looks, but the way they've executed and the ease of access to get things done here is actually really amazing. And I wish more companies adopt this because um, it's actually really nice. And let's actually take a look at this here. So we'll first start off with the frame here, since that's the thing right in front of us. So if we grab a closer look at the frame, we see that we have three carbon fiber plates here. And if you want to access any section, you just remove the corresponding screws and you get full access. For example, I want to make sure my flight controller isn't shorting out. So you just remove that and you have access to your flight controller, which is really awesome. And not only that, they have these like little U bridges right there, which are very sturdy. And that theoretically right there improves the overall durability of the quadcopter. You get to see a little close up right now once we remove the black back plate here. So here's the U uh, standoff bridge, we might call it right there, uh, exposed right here. It's very thick, very good. It's obviously aluminum. And the thing what's really nice about this, is it adds structural integrity. Not only that, it's also holding the arms into place here which is also, again, a really great thing to do here. This is, I think, the first frame I've ever seen do this. So that feature right there is really awesome. Instead of having to remove the whole upper plate, you could just remove sections and work on whatever you need to work on. So the ease of access is absolutely beautiful. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the 3D printed parts here. And there's still a bit more about the frame. Now, as you can tell right here, the, the 3D printed parts that are provided or designed for this frame are very well thought through because you just have just about, look where the XC60 is going to sit. That's just awesome right there. You don't have to worry about the battery leads falling down or the wires and getting chopped off. So this is a really nice position and I, and I truly like that actually. It's very thoughtful. And if we look back here, this is not PLA, this is actually TPU and they have the mounting set up for you. So for example, uh, usually for, let's just say a Rush FPV video, uh, antenna here, a video transmitter antenna, you'll be able to mount their plastic piece that they provide with their antennas here, such as you see right here that came with the Cadex Vista. Now I did have to install this Cadex Vista. This was not in there. Um, I'll, all I got from T-Motor was the frame, the stack, and the motors. So I had to put the camera and the transmitter myself here. Now, speaking of the Cadex Vista back here, if we flip this over, look at the amount of mounting solutions we have back here. We could put like a 16 by 16, a 20 by 20, and a 30 by 30, and we can actually move it back and forth. So that's a really awesome addition right here. It gives you so much flexibility, um, which is really, really awesome. I haven't seen that again yet in any other, any other frame. And if we take a closer look here, they do uh, also provide with the low ESR capacitor, which is a really, really great sign here. Now, I've gone ahead and already removed the nuts that were on the flight controller so we can grab a closer look at it. Now, as you can tell, this is the latest F722 with USB Type-C. And I don't think it has a 10-volt regulator. It doesn't have a 10-volt regulator. Oh, I didn't even see that before. So that's really nice. So it doesn't have a 10 volt regulator here, but it does have 10 volts. And you're like, what the hell? How is that possible? Well, the ESC here has that 10 volt regulator. So this is outputting the 10 volt and also the battery voltage. Now, when I first got this, I didn't know that if I just move this slightly, it's going to actually be 10 volts. So some of these pads are 10 volts, but they're hidden by the rubber O-rings or the, the rubber gummies, I should say. And I ended up taking for the Cadex Vista off VBAT on 6S and it was just flying 
just fine. So I didn't have any issues there, uh, which is a good thing. And uh, if we flip it back over, we also do have a connector for the DJI setup. If you're going to go ahead and do that, the full fledged one. So that's a really nice addition as well. Very simple and plain and to the point on this uh, board right here. We still do have an on-screen display as well. We have memory on this. So overall, it's really nice. MP6000 gyro and 5 volt regulator. Do we have a barometer? Hmm. No, I don't think we have a barometer here. If I miss it, let me know. Usually sometimes I miss stuff uh, while I'm recording here. But yeah, so we don't have a barometer on board as of right now. And here we're using the F50 amp. So this is the 50 amp uh, variant of the Pacer ESE, which has obviously the 10 volt regulator. Flew absolutely phenomenal, had no issues there. And they do also provide you with the low ESR capacitor and they have that installed as well. And the connector just connects just like any other connector here. Nothing really special about that. Now, if you move to the motors. Now, the motors are interesting, I would say. It's not the smoothest motors. And what do I mean by not the smoothest motors? Not in terms of oscillations or vibrations. In terms of the throttle curve or, or the torque curve or where the power comes from. In the beginning from like 0 to 20%, it's pretty linear. And then all of a sudden, when you jump up these 3%, it just goes exponentially up. And it just wants to just bounce up. So I was really having a difficult time hitting the normal or flying the normal proximity flying. I usually fly with everything else because it just wants to go after a specific throttle. It really just jumps like um, almost uncontrollably in a way. The, 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 the torque curve on this is uh, it's going to need some getting used to. I had a, I had a quite a challenge. It was very challenging to get used to. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying if I put more time, I'd obviously get used to it. But it's something to keep in consideration. If you wanted something, or if you knew what you're looking for, you wanted something very linear, these would not be the motors for you. And again, these are the 2306 1950 KV motors, and they are hella fast, really, really fast. So let's talk about default tune and everything. Well, this thing came with default beta flight, but I don't know if that's going to be the case with the production model. Um, probably not, or probably they will. I'll contact them and let them know, or ask them, and I'll update that in the comment section down below or the video description if they respond to me in time uh, to let you know but I kept it default beta flight pids and it was flying just really great it does need a slight tune I felt like the eye just needs it wasn't holding its attitude very well it's a pretty interesting design this is the first one I received uh, from T-Motor here and um, I like the flight controller I love the ESC so far the motors are I'm not really a big fan of the motors here uh, the execution or the way the frame is design the frame design is is absolutely phenomenal we also do have cutouts if you wanted to mount your gopro very easily with a zip tie if you wanted to do that and uh, obviously i'm sure you'll be able to purchase the 3d printed parts however i just zip tied uh, a 3d printed part here for the gopro and that's about it here and um yeah <clears throat> i don't know if i mentioned this but look at the back here you have so many mounting solutions it's just insane so overall that's all i could really say i'll have everything linked down below here also where it could be because this still has not been released i don't know if you could get the stack just yet either but the but the esc was really great once i noise test it and uh, i still haven't received any i might take this apart and go noise test the esc uh we'll see how that goes and well everything's linked down below guys i really hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know what you think and i'll see you guys in the next one peace